Hunter x Hunter, episode 33. Why does Kalua look so grown? Are they subtly like raising their heights? An X empty X threat. It's funny coming back to Gon and Kalua after the Hisoka episode. Because before I'm like, yeah, Hisoka's powerful, but Gon will punch him in the face. Now, I don't know. I mean, Gon will do it or die. <laughs> it's one or the other. But it's a lot more than I thought it would be. To Gon's credit, it seems like he kept his promise. What an honor. That's a lot. It's a lot. Oh, is there anything Nen can't do? Oh, okay. もしかしたらこいつ、こっそりずるしてるかもしれないじゃん。<笑> Yeah, and sometimes taking a break from something, even if it feels counterproductive or you worry it's counterproductive, is the best thing for you. So many times in my life, I've practiced something routinely and, you know, improved gradually to discover after a long break, I'm quickly way better than I was during regular practice. Like there's a little bit of getting the rust off the wheels, but that's over with pretty quickly. And then it's weird. You like jump a rank. Your brain has multiple channels that are that are running simultaneously. And just because you're not consciously or actionably working on something doesn't mean it, your, your brain isn't resolving things things, hashing things out, forming solidified memories, etc. Obviously, the ceiling has been raised tremendously. Right, it makes sense. What is it going to fly off? Yeah, why did you lie? The sky's the limit, honestly. That's nothing. His, he had a very special technique of losing a limb, where you actually just lose your limb. And also bubblegum. He still hasn't seen it? I really want to see his reaction. A normal person would just defecate their pants, but not Gon. He's going to defecate his pants excitedly, with passion. Does it actually come through on video? If the naked eye couldn't pick it up, how could video? Okay. Oh wow, there are subsections. How deep does it go? You just sit there. <laughs> Okay, okay. Zushi's still in this. Maybe I counted him out too soon. Extreme focus. Oh, it actually does come through. I thought Wing was set setting them up. And Wing can do this effortlessly. Yeah, you gotta make it so effortless it's like breathing. It's like Tanjiro's breathing technique, speaking of which. Alright, this is a very good news and bad news situation. I was wondering about this. I thought so. Yeah, I thought so. Okay, innate talents and what have you. That's really cool. Obvious parallel there for life. Cool, that's awesome. There's a larger game to be played in education, right? Because you're learning a field or fields. You pick something to apply yourself to. But hopefully while the lens is outward on the, the particular craft, it's also inward on what feels right. What are your natural strengths? It's always going to take hard work, right? But hard work plus natural aptitude and interest and passion is an exponential multiplier. A lot of people prescribe discipline as the answer to growth. And discipline is really important and a, a very powerful tool. I think most importantly, it's kind of just... Uh, uh, building a track record for yourself that you believe you can do what you, you want to do, what you think you should do and what you could do. And there are some things that are just going to suck no matter what, but are obviously good and so discipline will apply there. But another element to it that I don't think should be overlooked is what just feels 
right? Like what are the things that are that could be areas of growth that are not even work? Things where you've already, just by virtue of your your growth into adulthood, have allowed you to hit the point where the work itself is positive reward and feedback. You're already there, right? So you may as well push those as far as you can as well. Discipline, I think, goes wrong when you're exerting so much energy to do something that really it doesn't matter that much to you and it won't really benefit you all that much. There's just a fixation on doing it because of an anticipated reward that could perhaps be obtained in a, in a better way, but hasn't been identified yet or just an insecurity, a mistaken fixation, an inherited belief about what one ought to do, even when it doesn't really fit or suit your life. And then, you know, that natural free flowing, follow your whims, follow your instinct state goes wrong when it's applied to things that feel really good, but aren't ultimately that useful for you. It seems like Nen for the characters is going to be not just a power system, but also an expression of self, who they are as individuals. Yeah, that, that's cool. I like that in conjunction. It's all those things. Wing turning into a great teacher. Yeah, we can learn Gyo and then start to begin to have any remote chance against Hisoka. This is where Gon would lose a lot of people as friends. It's only because Kalua and Zuchi are on his level that they would like this. And in that sense, he's lucky. I'm like not intim intimidated. Ow, cheat him with the no one likes you. Yeah, I'm not intimidated by them after seeing Hisoka. They just leveled down in my esteem. That sucks to be you. That sounds like a you problem. Gon, don't. You don't need to fight on every hill. Okay. Kluwa being a real friend. Why is he staring at the back of Zushi's head? Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh, Zushi's a target. My poor sweet Zushi. These kids are a force. Speaking of like feedback loops where they're already getting positive reinforcement. Don't get left behind, Zushi. Fight for your relevance as a character. This is where Gon will lose a lot of people. <laughs> Zushi's out. You're out. Don't leave Zushi alone. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh no. My poor little Zushi. He's in a cold, dark world all by himself. Don't go in the alleyway. Have you never seen anime? Wow, he's not even being subtle. This will 100% work on Gon. He totally has his number. Alright, so far just a little kidnapping. Oh, Kalua sniffed it out. Damn, what a badass. Kalua just taking matters into his own hands. But why? Does he feel like he can't win? Yeah, and Gon does need practice. Only Kalua could walk into an alleyway of like the of three level bosses and feel this unmoved, feeling like the one in charge at 10 years old or whatever. Also, what a bro, just coming after Zushi on his own, seeing a problem and handling it himself. During the Hunter exam arc, I didn't know what to think of Kalua other than the fact that he was obviously cool and headstrong and maybe a little bit insecure or chip on his shoulder. But the more I watch him, the more I realize he's actually really sweet. It also seems like he's becoming increasingly humble as he discovers people's powers. Is this growth? <laughs> they did not, in fact, keep their deal. Gon also will put it on his shoulders and try to do things on his own. Some communication would have gone a long way here. Tell me about it. Growth. Character growth. A little communication. Yo, take the under on yourself. And that's when Kalua decided to kill. 
we've been played. We were so focused on seeing Nen that we didn't see humanity. I just casually mastered it while running errands. And this theme again. Kalua coming into his power. Like bubblegum. That's great. Can you do it while fighting? Yeah, but he's still getting tired from watching TV. Kalua's friendship with Gon Man is it's so great. So pure. No, no animosity in the rivalry. Trying to make them pay. Zushi just became a liability. In a way, I kind of feel like Gon and Klua are lucking out by encountering this kind of malice and cruelty, partly because of how pathetic it is. I mean, there's such a danger to the world now with these emerging powers. There's a little bit of tension. I mean, they're the main characters and I'm sure they're going to turn out to be amazing people. Nevertheless, there's a feeling of danger in their growth because this is a truly lawless world. They can do anything. Who do they become? But their spirit of like rescuing Zushi and having this community, having each other, having things that are really solid is in such stark contrast to the kind of sniveling malevolence they're running up against. I feel like it would be helpful in molding their their values and giving them a taste of what actually feels good to pursue. They're both really powerful in their insolence and like to be insolent against terribleness is nice. It feels good. I also respect Wing a lot more. I think he's making the right decision by recognizing there's no stopping them, but he can guide them in a way that best serves them going forward as adults. I think a lesser person, a lesser teacher would be afraid of their talent and would try to destroy it. You're thinking way too far ahead, my dude. I hope he doesn't even make it through Kalua. He's feeling more and more like a stepping stone. Wow. Wow. This kid. <laughs> Terrifying. Awesome. And that's how Klua and Gon win by forfeit. <laughs> and the music. That's amazing. Wow. Not only did he not make it through Kalua, he didn't even make it to the fight. Hope he bet on himself. So let's haul him out and climb. With Ahsoka seemingly at the pinnacle. This ending is truly special, man. It adds so much hype to the ending. It like improves the show every episode. Why bother? And we'll never see him fight. He will not be missed. Kalu is just kind of all in on his purpose of supporting Gon and friends, really honoring that that dubious promise to his father and beyond. I already feel a character shift in Kalua from the beginning to now. And I think it's it's Gon or it's him finding a higher purpose. He was kind of drifting aimlessly, trying to find something to apply his ability to. Maybe the thing occupying that slot before Gon and friendship was proving himself, maybe sticking it to his family. I'm the best regardless of the things I'm running away from. Gon gives him something to really focus on that's good. He's still kind of dark, you know, showing up as an assassin about to stab that dude in the head. It's like classic chilling Kalua but it has a different tone or quality now because it's in support of something. And also, he's showing restraint. He's thinking. The narration at the end called it natural aptitude for both of them that's allowing them to climb the ranks this quickly. And like, yeah, of course, it's aptitude. But I feel like that glosses over something significant. The implication being that it's just inborn, I don't think it's that. I mean, there's an element of that, right? Like, you have to be at a certain level of ability and intelligence and capability of growth to grow. But given, I think, just a certain minimum, what's more important is probably just their focus. And yeah, there's luck in that too because their focus is a function of how they were brought up and the environment they experienced and their unmet needs and desires that led to that focus. But nevertheless, there's something actionable in there, I think. And it's something like, because they began searching or hunting for something big, way bigger than themselves and way bigger than what most kids can comprehend early on, they refined their, their hunger for that pursuit and also their abilities to engage in that pursuit. Gon has this monolithic figure he's aspiring to, which is his father, which really is a creation of his own mind, right? Like his father's real, but Gon isn't dealing with his father. He's dealing with his feeling of his father, which is really him. And it's such a high ceiling that uh, the gravity or magnetism just pulls him at a very accelerated rate. Kulu as well had a very high ceiling because of who his family is and what he was pushed to do. And also his dissatisfaction with that life on some level. But it's there for the taking. You know, I don't think it's just a function of like their DNA. 
purely. There's an ethos, ethos in there that feels like something to aspire to. And the pull, the hunger, it leaves less room for wavering and for negative ruminations, for self-doubt. It's tapped in. It hits a critical point where it becomes self-generating.